this. Does this look okay? Come here. Come on up. I don't know where I want to podcast or what my hair is doing. Don't give me that look, Audrey. I'll try move closer. See, I feel like this isn't very yarn podcasty. Are you so tired? Oh. Hmm. No, I don't have a light on. Now it's just too dark. You guys want to come on the couch? You want to come sit? Ooh, lipstick. We forgot lipstick. What you doing? Here you go upstairs. All right. Drink. This is Once Upon a Corgi After Dark. All right. Hello and welcome to episode 30 of the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. I'm Gabby, your host, and you can find me everywhere on the internet as Gabigales, Instagram, Twitter, Periscope, Pinterest, Ravelry. Um, you can find all of my hand dyed yarn and fiber at uponacorgi.com or at Once Upon a Corgi on Etsy. We've got one of our corgis hanging out with us right now. This is Iron, and then the pitter patter is Audrey, who's pacing the kitchen. You want to come say hi? No, not actually say hello. Um, you can find all the show notes for this episode in our Ravelry group. Uh, Once Upon a Corgi podcast under the groups tab on Ravelry, and I think that's it. Wow. Every intro gets its own little cheer. Uh, yeah, we are a weekly crafty puppy podcast brought to you from Southern Connecticut, so here we go. We have a couple announcements before we get into the knitting. I'm hoping this week will actually be a shorter episode because it has officially only been one week. So we just did a giveaway last week and pulled the prize for Mina Phillips from the Knitting Expat Snow Day Shawl. And Mina super graciously gifted us a copy or a, a slot, I don't know what you want to call it, of her New York Sock Club to give away to one of you guys. She gifted me a copy of, I, I guess it's technically an ebook, but she gave me, she gifted me a copy of it and it was super gracious. So thank you so much, Mina. I can't wait to see everything. We're gonna open a giveaway thread for that. And I will have a prompt in there. 
I haven't decided what it is yet, but it might be New York themed. Probably food related because I'm kind of hungry again. I have to eat before I podcast. I do. So, uh, head on over to the Revelry group to enter into that giveaway and I will draw prizes for that tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Ooh, that's quick. Uh, next week when I record the podcast. Um, I'm super excited to see it. There is a coupon code for my shop if you purchase it because the first month is out of Once Upon a Corgi yarn, which is super exciting. <laughs> Other things is we officially sold out of our first club ever. So every month um, for the past five months have been one book from the series of unfortunate events and book five sold out and my jaw hit the floor because that has yet that has never happened before so thank you so much to everybody who bought the club and I'm super excited to get that out to you next week the other uh, announcement is also once upon a corgi shop related I will be vending at the Connecticut sheep and wool festival oh it's a cat I thought it asserted like an avalanche just happened <laughs> It sounded like a bunch of sleet just fell on my roof. Ooh, we're expecting a snowstorm in the next six hours. What was I saying? Oh, Once Upon a Corgi will be vending at the Connecticut Sheep and Wool Festival April 29th, 9 to 4 at the, I want to say Vernon Agricultural Center. I think so. I'll have a link to their website for more information, but I can't wait. It'll be our first show of the year. Back in action. I got a sign last year. I'm very, I'm very official now. I have to buy my own table too. So that is our announcements. And I guess let's get on with the show. First off, uh, because it is late at night, late-ish at night, um, we have an adult beverage today. Just some pumpkin beer. Because I deserve it after working all day, so meh. Mm. It's Blue Moon, in case anyone wants to know. So let's get on with the knitting. I feel like Audrey's like my director. Like she's standing right behind the lights like, okay, go, cut. Yeah, Audrey's the director. I have one finished object this week and I'm very impressed that I finished these. I thought for sure, I'd, now that I decided I'm gonna do this weekly, I wouldn't have any finished objects, but I do. So let's see if we can do it for next week. I have my, I guess these are technically my February socks. They are Beyond the Wall by Felici from Knit Picks. Um, there's a plain vanilla sock, um, 64 stitches on size US1 on my Haya Haya's, and I just got some Knit Picks stroll for the toes and heels, and I love them. I have to weave in all the ends, but I'm going to do that. Um, I'm just going to do a batch weave-in party, I think, each week. You know, cake method. Cake, weave an end. Cake, weave an end. So those are these guys, and um... I'm very happy with them. There's a little bit of like gray, as you can see here. I don't know if I'm going to be making any more huge Felici orders. Um, I was a little disappointed in the... I know it happens all the time with dyeing, like sometimes you just have no control over it, but like there was a lot more speckles in the Time Traveler skein. Um, I didn't find it so much with these guys, but unless I... I'll probably get Time Traveler again, but unless they come out with like a super cool stripe, um, I think I filled my Felici need. I think I did it. Unless Jake wants a pair of these. If I can get these again, I'll make him a pair. So these are my Game of Thrones socks, so they will also be going into not only my box of socks, but the 13 Months of Magic, because I'm going to see if I can do that accidentally. <sighs> I love them. Ooh, that's a that's a puppy. We have a lot of whips. Uh, I, I sort of have cast on itis a little bit. It hurt. It hurt a smidge. Uh, first, we have our. I guess it's not cast on itis because I had to cast it on to work on this giant whip. Yeah, bud. Where's yours? Did you? Do you want to bring it up? Do you want to show them? Bring up. Bring it up. Come on. You don't want to show them. What you... He's just sticking his head in my basket of whips. Not hiding anything in there. No, you can't put it in there. That's not where that goes. He's trying to put his bow in So I cast on the second square to my pinwheel scrap blanket. Uh, this is a pattern by Mina Phillip. 
and I've got half a block done. I did these two today while dying, and then I did these two earlier in the week. I'm gonna see if I can get at least one block a month, if not two, because they are so quick. Done for the year. So we'll see. My goal is to just clear out a minis by the, the end of 2017. Yes, 2017. No, don't dig that. You can't dig that. We've also been working on our Find Your Fade shawl, which is now getting into the big rows. But the motivation that I've been seeing on Instagram has been pushing me through this, and I just can't wait to get into the next colors. So I am, is this front? Yep. I'm in color E, which is Grand Budapest Hotel by the Fawn of the Fox on her, I want to say magpie, but I keep forgetting the check. It's her sparkly base. So there we go. It's getting there. I believe, one, two, three. I think this right here is the biggest section, but I could be mistaken. Um, I'm just very excited to start going into the next color. I still have the lace section, but that shouldn't, that shouldn't take too long. I might work, no, I'm gonna work my sweater tonight. I keep like waving this around, sorry. So I'll give you a overview of it. Here we are. And yeah, it's super addicting, really potato chippy. It's a very nice short term goal, kind of knit and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Now iron's laying down on the project bag so I can't put it away. So we also have, um, I guess these would be our March socks, the pixel socks from Pearl Soho, and I'm knitting this out of remnants of Dark Like My Soul and the red dress. And there we go. I'm not, I am liking how they're turning out, but I'm not super enjoying the knit. So I'm gonna let them simmer for a little bit and maybe rip them out. I haven't decided yet. I think 2017 is going to be the year where I seriously think about what I'm knitting and if I'm enjoying it. And if I'm not enjoying it, just stop. Because I'd rather enjoy the knitting than slog through a pair of socks. But I don't know. I'm going to let them simmer for a little bit and see what happens. They look very holiday-y in my brain. I don't know what's happening here. I don't know. That's very strange. Whatever. We'll do this. Woo! Oh, I still have that fuzzy. So there we go. They are on my Knit Pro Zings. Uh, size US 1.5. 2.5 millimeter. Excuse me. DPNs. There we go. And they're both a Stellina base. I'm not really sure why I'm not enjoying them. I'm just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not in right the headspace, in the right headspace. So we, we will see. And these are living in my Chili Neats donut bag because it's adorable and I love it. How could you say no to that bag? We also have... But I haven't worked on the, ooh, where's my sandus? I'll grab that next. We're all over the place today. That's what happens when you podcast after noon. We have the Chuck sweater, which has not gotten a lot of love. I don't think it's got, no, I got, I gave it some love. I think I was here last time. I should really put a progress keeper in. Did I? I did. <gasps> Look at that. Look how smart I am. I got that far. So I'm going to work on this tonight. Wednesdays are the Chuck sweater night. Um, so we're going to put on the office and work on this. No, we're not. We're probably going to sit in silence and work on this because that's how much I love it. And this is on um, my Isaac DK base, which is 100% non super wash Polworth in the That's No Moon colorway. And I cannot wait for this to be done so I can wear it. It's probably going to be done and then spring's going to hit. Mm. I'm so happy with it. And this is the Chuck sweater by Andy Sutherland, which is going to go into the Sutherland knit along held hosted by KT from inside number 23. And it's living in my skeleton bag. I did a, if you saw on Instagram, I think it was on my personal Instagram. I went through all my whips and took them out of the bag like every single whip took them out of the bag put them with their yarn took all the extra needles like reorganized everything ripped out like three projects put everything in bags reorganized my notions 
it was lovely and very satisfying and not as overwhelming as I thought it would be. I have to grab another shawl. So now living in the Star Wars bag that Molly from Molly Klein Designs uh, gifted me in a swap we did is my sand knit shawl by Gudrun Johnson. And this is being knit out of um, My Sun and Stars and Moon of My Life on my ginger base. And I'm knitting these on my new Knit Prosing Interchangeables. Aw yeah, this is US 6. US 6 for a millimeter and I'm loving them. I switched the needles in hopes that it would like motivate me to work on this more. I just don't think, I feel really weird trying to explain this because I love the way this looks and I'm loving how it's turning out. It's just I'm trying to, it's very odd because it's, it's on two different sets of needles. Like I'm loving how the border is looking with the contrasting ridges and I love how the body knit up. It's just not what my heart craves, but I do want to finish this to have it up for Connecticut Cheap and Wool. And I think once it's done, I will thoroughly enjoy it more. Um, also because every time I look at the pattern, I need to do another lace repeat. So now I think we're up to one too. Like, the 100 billion, at least 100 billion lace repeats. <laughs> so um, we chose this as a like simple, hey, let's intro to lace knit along. And then we've all had to rip them out at least 10 times. I'm sorry I keep like, whoop, whoop, whoop. So there's a close up of the My Sun and Stars. And here we are, Moon of My Life. They look beautiful together and it's so squishy. Yep, I think I have like four lace repeats left. So we will we will do this. I definitely I work on it on Tuesday nights when I'm at that knit group. And I think I'm gonna set aside Thursdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays to work on this shawl. I would like it done by mid-March. I think that's doable. And then if I get it done before that, I feel super accomplished. I didn't put the needle case back in. I'm gonna regret that. I have two bags, but I'm not 100% sure what's in this one. Oh, it's just my hand spun socks. I haven't shown you these in a while. I haven't worked out of them in a while because I remembered I don't go to the movies that often, but this is just a, this will be a um, version of the Afterthought Everything sock. So it's just a tube of hand spun right now. Um, I'm knitting this on US 2s. Carbons DPNs and I'm about halfway there. I think this will be my This will be about the cutting point And then I'll stick the heel in about here Because if I measure this correctly Each color bit is about the length I need it to be Yeah And this is um a Creekside loop bump. No, it's not time to play It's not I said the piece Calm down time. Yeah, come on up. Come here. Come on. We got one, Bobby. Come here, Audrey. Come on. You want the bone? Here. No, 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 mom. So yeah, it's a chain ply that I did. Um, the Creekside loop bump. Has not gotten a lot of love. I should bring it out more. Should go to the movies more. That's what I should do. <laughs> Our last whip is, nope, just kidding, ha <laughs> ha Our second to last whip is a new whip. Um, I cast this on Sunday when I met up with a former coworker for coffee because he was in, in this state. So I figured I needed something to work on and I meant to grab one sock and I grabbed a cake of yarn and some needles instead. So this is the Sorcerer's Uniform by Biscott Yarns on their 80, 20, 85, 15. 8515 um, sock yarn and I'm knitting this on my 2.5 millimeter cubics DBNs and I miss them I miss them so much so there we go I did a three by one ribbing just because I was feel I was feeling a little different 
and worked on them today while I was dying and I love them. <sighs> I'm hoping to get these done by the end of the month so I can enter them into Katie's February Harry Potter knit along. But they will also go into my box of socks and the 13 months of magic. I'm hoping to I'm still still trying to keep ahead of the box of socks. I will not I will not let it win. I will win this year. Box. So there we go. I did a 64 stitch. Uh yep. No progress keeper yet. When it gets a little longer and I feel like I haven't done anything, I'll put it on. But with self-striping, it's it's really not I'm not prone to feeling like it's taking forever because I'm like ooh next stripe ooh next stripe and this is living in my Erin Lane bag that I got at Stitches West Midwest Stitches Midwest Stitches West is coming up and I'm very excited for everybody who's going our last work in progress for real this time I've pined about this long enough and that is this snow day shawl by Mina Phillip and I went and ooh, it's tangled it's tangled I went and picked up some Quince & Co to start it, and I did! I love it! So we have Quince & Co's, it's Quince & Co in Chickadee, which is what she used to design it. So we have the petal colorway, this is first one, and then twig, and then this is Melbeck, the uh, dark red. So we are, uh, we have a little bit more of this transition, and then we're into the straight. Now that I'm in the middle of a row, I will tell you the story. So I got to the red section of, um, I got into the red section like this, but up here, you know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> and I realized that I did something a little weird in the texture section. Like it just wasn't, the breaks weren't lining up properly and it just, it looked funny. So I decided that I kept staring at it long enough that it, it was clearly bothering me, so I did the adult thing and put in a lifeline and I ripped it back. So now I'm, I mean, I was far enough into the red section, sorry, I keep looking down, far enough into the red section that I cut the uh, twig colorway, the brown one, and then went back. So I'm hoping I left a long enough tail that if my gauge has changed at all, even if it does, I don't think it'll be that significant. But um, I now have like 800 balls of yarn in this bag because I just have this, ooh, oh God, this itty bitty little nugget left that's now covered in dog hair going into this. But I think I only have a couple more rows of the textured section, then I'm back into the red. So this definitely will be done by the next podcast. It is a very quick knit. Um, I mean, Mina did it in a day. So a normal person who can knit at normal speed could probably do it in three or four days. Uh, I did it during the, when did I, I, I ended up casting it on the Friday before the Super Bowl just to get it to a good um, pattern point so there wasn't any setup rows I had to do. And then I worked on it mostly during the Super Bowl because we went to our friend's house, which I will tell you about in Life Things. So it's very easy knit. I thoroughly enjoy it. It's very addicting. It's very it's very potato chippy and because it's DK and on um, I'm knitting on a US 7 the joy with new needles is all the words haven't rubbed off yet 4.5 millimeter on my knit pro zing interchangeables a little, well, a little bit more awkwardly than normal because it's super heavy and I am using the progress keeper that I got in a reason swap oh isn't he so cute so there we go. I'm expecting this to be done quite soon and I cannot wait to wear it. We are getting into the weird New England, well it was 50 degrees today and we were expecting up to 8 inches of snow tonight. So we're in that kind of weather and we'll be in that weather until about May. <laughs> Sounds about right. And that's all my whips. I am going to take a small page out of Joanna from the Upper Joe from the Opera Joe, Joanna, who is Opera Joe from the Stitching the High Notes podcast, and be a little bit monogamous with my knitting to try and get some of the stuff off the needles because now it's getting a little overwhelming. The socks, not so much because they're socks. That's easy enough. 
Um, but having three shawls and a sweater on the needles and needing to cast on another sweater, I'm getting a little bit frightened that I'm going to run out of time. I know it's only February, but in my, in my soul, it feels like I have one month until the end of the year and then everything has failed if I don't finish it. So that's my own problem I need to deal with. <laughs> And that's it for knitting. I do not have any sewing. I have been in a funk since the dress incident of two weeks ago, but I did spin a little bit. So I whipped out my little, my turtle, my turtle made Turkish spindle, and this is the glow in the dark one. And it's just a little BB one. And I started spinning this bat I got at Hrimshula, which is, uh, it was a day of classes for the SCA, and a friend of mine had a booth of her naturally dyed yarns and naturally dyed fibers and fiber bats. So this is the fire starter bat, and this is half of it. The plan is to spin one half, and then spin the other half, and then ply them together. So I have this much left of the other, of the first half. So I wanted to spin, um, I have a couple, like, fiber gradient kits that I really want to hand, like, uh, spindle spin. And I wanted to do it on my Turkish spindle, but I have to finish spinning one thing before I start spinning the next. Because my plan now is to, I think, finish the palladium loop bump that I have on my wheel, Turkish spin one of the gradient kits, and then use hand spun for the new design that Mina's working on. If you don't watch her podcast, you should but she has a gradient kit shawl being designed right now. And I want to do it at a hand spun. I don't know what it looks like, but I want it to be at a hand spun. And then gift that to my, uh, one of my photo teachers who is retiring this year. And I'm so, I'm so happy for her. She was the light to the end of my college tunnel. So yes, let me check my show notes. I can probably put my shawls away. Clean up a little bit. And that's basically it. So the rest of this will be shop stuff and life things. So if you just came for the knitting, thank you so much. Just kidding. I have a little bit of stash building. Not really stash building. Um, Amber from the Yarn Hoarder podcast. Ooh, let me fix my shawl. I don't know what the pattern of the shawl is, but it's in the Lothlorien colorway, probably by 100 Ravens. My mom made it for me. Now I won't be able to get it back on. So uh, Amber from the Yarn Hoarder podcast sent me a little, so yeah, she sent me a little a little gift bag, including a yellow paper house knitting journal, which, girl, thank you. I have been eye spying these for so long. I cannot wait. I think I'm gonna use it for garments because I feel like those you need to take a lot of more, a lot of more, a lot more notes for, and those are things that I'm gonna want to go back for. So it's got like all the information here and then I'll paid for notes. Thank you so much. I have been just stalking this Etsy shop. It's um, yellowpaperhouse.etsy.com and I will show you in just a second. I'll show you the tags. So there you go. And they have an array of adorable journals and notebooks. So thank you so much for that. She also sent me a little pack of mother of all tags and these are water what is it, what is it called sharp mm, water they're waterproof tags for your hand spun so major crinkling you write on them with sharpie and then you can leave them on your hand spun when you soak it and i love this this is perfect Oh, they even have like, what day, What was I showing you? Yeah, so they have fiber content colorway and then wraps per inch, plies, length, weight, date. Oh, I can't wait to put this on all the hand spun I'm gonna do in my brain. I have so many hand spun plans, I just haven't done them. Can we talk about iron right now? Draw me like one of your French pups. Him and Jacob been snuggling all day. Such a hard life. 
And she also sent a little packet with, ooh, a stitch marker, a mini, some teas, and a little yarn hoarder button. Trying not to get a glare. There we go. So thank you so much, Amber. That was totally unnecessary, but I love them nonetheless. And now shop update stuff. So we will have our shop to update this Thursday at 7 p.m. at uponacorgi.etsy.com. So I hope you can make it. And we will be having, have no fears. I have gotten many a request for Oswald for my everything. Half of this came off the drawing rack today. And then the other half uh, just went on the drawing rack about two hours ago. So we will have plenty of Oswald for Mayer, and we will have a couple uh, Frankenskeins of it. The overdye went a little cray cray, so um, the Audrey base ones, which will be listed under Frankenskein, will just be much darker than the other ones. The plan is if I sell out of them pretty quickly, I will put pre-orders up for everybody. So if you really want to use the same yarn that Mina does for the first month, you can. So we'll have lots of those in the shop. That's what. We will have Libraries Volume 1 on a variety of bases. I think that's it in this pile. So that was at on Audrey. This is it on Penny. I haven't scanned anything up yet. And then today we dyed up you know, because Valentine's Day is next week. Some of the romantics. <laughs> and we did large quantities of warm and cozy. This is it on Penny. And we we did some on the Riley base, which is our non-superwash Yak DK. So we have, I think, four on the Riley base. So that's a, I would say, a very decent amount. And, ooh, I almost forgot. I will be putting up, these are a limited amount, but I think every six months or so, I will be putting them up, but they are just an assortment of Once Upon a Corgi minis. So there are five 10 gram minis. Um, they will be on a random, random bases, random colors. They're not gonna have names because some of them are, um, some were like test gains that never, what's, what's wrong pumpkin? I have to go let a dog out. Ooh, you shocked me. Hey, right, what was he saying? Out of breath from letting the dogs out. Uh, yes, they will just be, um, an assortment of bases, an assortment of colors, some colorways you might recognize. As you see here some you may not because they've never really made it into rotation so I have I have, I have 10 of those so those will go up in the shop and when they sell out they sell out and they will be randomly selected I'm just gonna seal them up put them in a pile here's Audrey yes uh, it will be random mailed random selected so it'll just be a fun little mini surprise and that's it for this week. And so once again, that is at uponacorgi.etsy.com, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I hope you guys can make it. The rest of this is life stuff. I'm gonna get a drink, because I had to walk up all the stairs and now I'm out of breath. Do, do you need some water? Um, you can probably hear the cat in his litter box. Life stuff, it's been a little bit of an eventful week. Uh, last Thursday I went into the city and we had a little baby shower for Mina who is due like a week next week she's due next week so that was amazing to see everybody again and just hang out and knit and have delicious food oh, it was so good that pasta was delicious we went to Boca on 34th Street I'll put all the information in the show notes if you're interested. So that was wonderful. Um, what did we do? Worked, worked. Sunday, um, like I said earlier, I met up with a friend slash former coworker and had coffee with his partner and that was lovely to see them again. Um, I haven't seen or talked to him since 
August, really, when I left uh, the darkroom job. So that was very nice. And then Sunday afternoon, Jake and I went up to his friend's condo for the Super Bowl and ate so many delicious chips and pizzas and chilies. Ugh. Jake made halftime chili and it was fantastic. We do have like a whole pot of it now. So I'm trying to figure out different ways to use chili besides just eating it as chili. So far the plan is chili mac and cheese. So if you guys have any good what to do with leftover chili ideas, let me know because that would be fantastic. That would be great. Jake works a lot during dinner. He works mostly around dinner time, afternoon and tonight. So I end up usually eating all of our leftovers. So I can only eat chili so many times in a row. Yeah, that was about it. I was super adult this week and found a tax guy. I know, Iron. I'm proud of myself too. Yeah. Jake and I are rewatching The Office, which every time you watch it, it gets better. There's just, there is no limit to how often you can watch The Office. I love that show so much. It is, it's just what we needed. Uh, watch the news in the morning and cry a little bit on the inside and then turn on The Office and podcast for the rest of the day and it's beautiful. Uh, I haven't been reading as much as I would like. I would like to get into reading before bed instead of knitting before bed because Sometimes when I knit before bed, I just think about all the things I have to do knitting wise and it overwhelms me and then I get stressed out and I can't fall asleep and I have not been sleeping well. So we're going to try reading and see if that helps. Yeah, pumpkin. Probably because I drink coffee until bedtime. But I will never admit that's the problem. And that's about it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for checking us out if it's the first time. I know I usually try and say that at the beginning and I totally forgot. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the shop. It means the world to me. And yes, thank you so much to all, for all the feedback on the newsletters for the shop. Uh, I got a couple emails saying they were so excited to get them and that just, it, it melts my heart. So uh, yeah, we have a What's Upon a Corgi newsletter. It's just essentially going to be yarn updates, what I'm bending, new colorways, new new things. I'm doing a little community corner. So if you want to um, submit your finished object in a Once Upon a Corgi yarn, feel free. I think that's it. I'm gonna get my sweater out and put on the office again and have a nice night. I hope you guys get to do everything that you love this week and I will see you guys next week. Thank you for watching. Bye! We might have a jealousy problem. So, no, I'm happy. This is where I belong. Can you say hi? <gasps> Up here. Can you say hi to everybody's puppies? Say hi to all the puppies. <laughs>